Welcome to everybody, not only to the new ones, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And God is amazing. I really, I really want to encourage you, God loves healing people. God loves healing people. And I know sometimes we, we sit in situations where we pray for people and we don't always see the manifestation of that. And that is why um, we, I want to also teach a bit more on healing as well. But, but God loves healing people. God loves it when people are healed because He gets glory when people are healed. He really gets glory when people are healed. Does God get glory when people are sick? No. No. He doesn't get glory when people are sick. He doesn't like it when people are sick. And sometimes tradition is, and, 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 and we've been growing up, as soon as, we can't, uh, as soon as you pray for somebody and you don't see that uh, healing coming through completely or ma being manifested completely, we make up our own rules. We make up our own doctrines. We say, but God, maybe God doesn't want to heal right now. But there was a young girl, and this is a testimony of this, uh, this girl. She was uh, in an accident, and after months, she started to um, get symptoms in her body. And as she got symptoms in her body, um, it's, it started to, I'm not sure exactly what the disease was. Some of you will know the names. But um, she couldn't use parts of her body anymore. She couldn't use parts, um, and uh, she became weak, and later on, she was in a wheelchair, and uh, in her heart, she said, Lord, I know that you're going to heal me. Lord, I know that you're going to heal me. I know that you're going to heal me. And uh, she said, Jesus, but, but when? And he says, um, it's, a, it's a progressive healing. The Lord said to her, it's a progressive healing. And um, in, that, in that time, there was a minister coming to visit the church. And they asked him, he prays for the sick. And, and they asked him, listen, uh, don't you want to come and pray for my daughter? And he says, no, 100%, I'll come. And when he came to uh, their house and, and he, he said to her, listen, God wants to heal you right now. And she says, but I don't understand. Uh, how does God want to heal me? Why do you tell me God wants to heal me right now? But God told me that uh, it's a progressive healing. And then immediately, the, the, um, as, as, they, as they were speaking, the Lord just opened it up to them that the Lord, uh, the progressive healing was based upon her faith, based upon what she believed. And so God works with you based upon what you believe. Okay, this, this will shake some of your doctrine. Okay. So some of the things that you are waiting for God, God desires it to already have been done. Okay, so, so what happened is she got healed that moment. So, so, so our, our theology or our doctrine or our religion sometimes says, but how does this work? Because God does not work with condemnation. If, if the, if, if, uh, how can I say, if, my, if I have faith in a certain space for a progressive healing, that's how, that's how I receive. That's how I'm, God's going to work with that. But God's best is for you to be immediately healed. God's best is for you to be immediately having some uh, things shifting, breakthroughs coming. Immediately that financial breakthroughs coming. Sometimes we're waiting, and I can just feel God's breaking things off people right now. Somebody's waiting for old age to be blessed, or when you are growing older to become blessed. That is a lie. God wants you to be blessed right now. God wants you to be prospering right now. That is God's perfect will for you to prosper right now because Jesus already died 2,000 years ago to pay for that prosperity, to pay for that healing, to bring that salvation. He says the salvation has appeared unto all men. That means, is everybody saved? It's, it, salvation is available to all people. Is everybody saved? No, because everybody hasn't re believed and, and confessed with their mouths. They, everybody hasn't received that, that salvation yet. And same thing with the healing, inside of salvation is healing, is deliverance, is wholeness, is freedom. All of that's in there for your whole life. God has made provision for your whole life. And it's time that, uh, that, that we actually start to awaken that we are not waiting on God for certain things, that He's waiting for us to change. 
God is sincerely, sincerely patient with you. <laughs> He's so patient with you. He's waiting for us to catch up. He's waiting for us to catch up. Why? Because if you are blessed, He looks good. Do you have your children and they have torn clothes? Do you look awesome? Do you walk around with your... Look how torn my... I can't even provide for my children. Does God get blessed? Is He blessed when you are, uh, when you are si- having sickness or disease? Sometimes we have to let go. We have to let go of our traditions. And I want to ask you this morning to let go of what you know and let Jesus teach you who Jesus is. Because we all are faced with this thing is we all, or many of us, and if you haven't grown up in church, thank God for that as well. Because a lot of us has grown up in church and we learn stuff and we build it on foundations which was never Christ. It was built on foundations of doctrines of man and traditions and all of these things that looks like Jesus and appearance of Jesus, but there's no power in it. If we have a service without the power and the healing of God, we, have, we, are, we are playing church. And so when we don't see the things of God being manifest, the eyes comes back to us, not to Jesus. What are you, oh, what are you not, why are you not healing them? No, why are you not healing them? Why are you not healing them? Why are you not doing what I called you to do? Why are you not walking in what I told you to walk? You, I said you will do greater things than I do. Do you see the greater? You see, sometimes our focus is upon Jesus so that we can see who Jesus made us to be. That He that is within us is greater than He that is within the world. And so, so, so we should stop being afraid of all the things of the enemy and all the demons. We should start to cast them out of people. So that we can bring the light of the gospel inside of people. So that people can be free from themselves and free from the demonic oppressions that's happening in the world. And so that we can do our job. <laughs> and so so many times we're waiting for Jesus to, to, to actually do something out there. But Jesus works in you and, um, and not in a... Wait, wait that's maybe going to be taken wrong. So what we want to do is we want to ask Jesus or we, what we want to do is we want to take what we believe and put it on the table and say, Jesus, I surrender what I believe regarding healing, regarding uh, prosperity, regarding this, regarding this, regarding this. I want to put it on the table. I want to put everything that I believe on the table because sometimes what you believe is costing you a price. Sometimes what you believe is costing you a price and you think it, it is actually safety and it's not safety. I'm not sure. I didn't plan on saying any of these. So God's, God's trying to get people to awaken to the person of Jesus so that they can see the right image of Jesus because God does not do bad things. God does not allow bad things. God does not permit bad things. God doesn't, are not walking in agreement with Satan and saying, okay, let's, let's get them. Let's see how miserable we can make them and see. And then we tell them to rejoice in all things. <laughs> God's not against you. God is for you. God is in you. And God is one. I am hidden with Christ in God. And so God cannot be against you because you are hidden with Christ in God. If God comes and He's being against you, He's actually being against Christ. He says, no, but the price that Jesus has paid is not, it's not, it's not good enough. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Amen. There we, there we go. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a bonus sermon. Amen. I want to just give you this nugget. I just got it this week. As the Lord, um, it just came to me, just the Holy Spirit, because He's awesome. He's so smart. The Holy Spirit is smart. He's smart. He's intelligent. I mean, He designed you, which is so complicated. You don't even understand you. Thank God He understands you. Amen. What would you do with you if you didn't have Him? Oh, boy. 
There was this lady going for an interview one day, and she says, yes, um, I'm so busy. He says, busy with what? She says, I'm busy, so busy managing myself. I'm a lot of work. Yes, that's right. And we need a, we need a, we need a, we need a comforter. We need the counselor, and his name is the Holy Spirit. And so, so I either allow the Holy Spirit to minister to my heart and teach me who Jesus is, or... Um, or I can try to do things in my, own, in my own flesh or in my own strength, which is not the better option. Uh, but that's not what I wanted to say. I, the, the, you can write this down. Don't be in a prison of other people's opinions. Don't be in a prison of, a prison of other people's thoughts regarding your life. Don't be in, the, in a prison of other people's anger. Other people's issues. Other people's manipulations. Other people's assumptions regarding life. Don't be in the prison of other people's persecution. Other people's mistrust. Other people's judgments. Other people's confrontation. You see a lot of people, why well, they don't want to serve Jesus? Because um, when they serve Jesus, people are talking about them. And they don't like that. It's, it's uncomfortable. Ouch of Aina, of Hallelujah. Don't be in the prison of other people's fears. See, we walk around a lot of times thinking the whole day, thinking the whole time, what are they thinking of me? What are they? Am I looking good to them? Am I, am I good enough? Am I this? Am I this? And don't be in the prison of your own thoughts regarding your own life. Don't be in the prison of your own thoughts. It is, it is really important. I, I mentioned this last time. My brother, he expanded the, uh, his, the, the farm part of where the sheep are. He expanded the boundaries. He, he, cut, the, he cut the wires and he, uh, he made the fence bigger. And then the sheep, all that they do, they stop at the same old wire. Even there was no wire. They stop at the same line. They don't cross it until he pushes them to actually run through. And so don't be in the prison of what is in your thoughts and how you see life. You've got you to really get God's um, anointing and God's uh, perspective regarding your own life. Hallelujah. Yes, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6, it says, In all your ways acknowledge Him that, and He shall direct your path. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. Say with me, direct. Okay, so He will direct your path. So there is people that need direction for your life. And so how you get direction is you acknowledge Him. And that means I, I, don't, I don't make anything. And that's why last week I spoke to you uh, regarding this. I don't make anything the focus. I make Jesus the ultimate focus of my life. And so if I need direction for my life, what I do is I start to praise God. I tell Jesus, you're amazing. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the life. You see, a lot of people, they use God as a crutch. We know that saying. But sometimes what happens is, um, uh, or let me, let me tell you what to do, or what it should look like. What it should look like is, it's like two people falling in love, and they, they want to go places. They don't care where they're going. They don't care where they're going. They don't care how they get there. They are in love. Maybe some of you forgot about what it looks like. Anyway, just ask Jesus, he'll help you. Amen. You don't care about the journey. You don't care about anything. You care about communicating with this person that you've fallen in love with. And that is how our relationship with Jesus looks like. We are so in love that the things of the world doesn't matter anymore. The journey of the world doesn't matter anymore. And if things don't look the way it's supposed to look, it doesn't matter anymore because I'm in love. Do you know why a lot of Christians stop believing is because they've come into the relationship with all the, the things. It's like, um, if, you, if you don't protect me, if something's going to happen, then uh, this is not going to work for me. If you don't provide for me, and this is, this, uh, this is not working for me, Jesus. No, you know, this, is, this is not working. You don't, you, don't, you don't do all these things for me. <laughs> and so you see, when we come into a relationship with strings attached and you don't get what you want... Then you just push away the person. And so the other option is, is when you go strings attached into a relationship, the enemy comes and he just tells the, he just 
uh, uh, ruffles your feathers a bit and then you are in argument with Jesus regarding what is happening in my life. Why is this looking like this? It's not about anything like that. And if you hear, if you hear what I'm saying this morning, you'll become a free person from earth. And all the stuff that's happening on earth. And I want to go a little bit to politics if you don't mind. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay. So let me, let me just give you a little bit of Second Corinth, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Say humble. Pray. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Heal their land. Okay, so this is an old covenant scripture. I'm going to really just rephrase it in the new covenant. And, and so if my people who are called by my name, if you want to raise your hand, that's you today. You can do it. They will humble themselves. It means that I, I become free from my opinion. I become free from my feeling. I become free from me. <laughs> and then pray. What does it mean? What does it mean to pray? It's to actually speak life. Pray is not complaining with God. You see, when, the, when, when uh, Moses uh, had to take the children of Israel through the, uh, through the um, Red Sea, just before the Red Sea, what happened is... Um, he, he told the people, hey guys, God's going to deliver us, we, God's going to take, he's going to just do these amazing things. And then, it doesn't record that, but then the next moment God says, why are you crying out to me? So in other words, is, he just tells everybody how awesome, the, how awesome his God is and God's going to deliver them. And the next moment he's crying out to God. And so he's crying out. And, and you see why we have in this, in this time, we have uh, um, this, this voting thing happening in a country, I mean. And so people, what they do is they say, let's fill up the stadium and let's pray. And so what we do is we pray and we say, God save us, God save us, God save us, God save us, God save us. And then they go home and they say, oh, this country sucks. They're stupid. They're stupid. They're stupid. They're stupid. They're stupid. They're stupid. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. Nothing good can come out of this. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know who's the problem. Tell me. It's a, no, it's not you guys. You guys are absolutely awesome. I love you. you you're doing the things that he tells you to do. Amen? It's just the prideful people out there. And he says, then you pray. What do you pray? Not crying out to God. And he says, and Moses cried out to God, save, save, save. And he says, use your stick and take it over and put it over the Red Sea and I will part the Red Sea. There's something with grace and faith in combination is grace is God's supply. God supplies healing to you. God supplies deliverance to you. God supplies uh, His goodness, His faithfulness, His kindness, His gentleness. God supplies these things to you. He supplies them constantly to you. And faith, it says that we are saved by grace through faith. So grace is God's part supplying, supplying, supplying because He us, he gives us, and He takes care of us. Faith is me speaking in agreement with what His Word says. God, will, our children will be blessed in this land. How many of you are saying this every day? Don't raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. How many are talking what God talks regarding the situation and the mountain that's in front of you? And so what, what, what we got is we've got... What we call is our own mountains. And it looks different for every person. But it says pray. What does pray mean? It says that uh, we, you shall speak to the mountain and it shall move. I want to ask you the question is, uh, when laws have you uprooted all the seeds of death you've spoken over this country? Oh, I'm the problem. Yes, you are. You're just part of it. I'm just going to smile and wave. 
When laws that you bind every operation of ungodliness and every spirit of corruption and theft and greed. When last did you do that? Oh, shucks, I never knew I can do that. Yes, you can. Do you feel the power? Do you feel that you're not powerless? Do you feel that you're, there's a place where I can agree with heaven and we can in, bring heaven in? Because this country doesn't belong to man, it belongs to God. Your, 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 your fight is not flesh and blood, it is the principalities, and I use people to get to you. There's a guy in Bethlehem, and uh, um, it, it's, it, they are actually such a wealthy people, and um, there, was a, there was a thief or a robber, he jumped over the, over the wall, and they saw it in the, in the, I think it was early in the morning or something, and he ran out of the house behind this robber and he ran him, tried to run him down. And he, he just got a heart attack and he died right there. So yes, he was robbed of his life. So me freaking out over everything doesn't change anything. If you have the ability to have a voice in this country, have a voice. But if you have a voice at your house regarding this country, um, keep quiet. I had another word. Keep quiet. Pray. Humble yourself. Pray. When lost, oh, again, not you guys. I'm just teaching you so you can help other people. Amen? Hallelujah. When lost, that we bind every demonic work that wants to corrupt the votes and steal the votes. When lost, that you do that. Okay, this was, I actually, I just want to show you, this was, a, oh no, this, this is the bottom of my sermon, there's the, oh no, there's the top, okay, don't worry, it's going to be, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, it's okay, I don't have to tell you everything right now, but it's going to be okay. The next one, when last did you bind every tongue that influences people to brainwash people to their selfish motives? Seeing the problem and talking and agreeing with the problem and speaking death over the problem doesn't help the problem. You have to speak what you want to see. You have to allow the angels of God to come in and fight. And so when I, there's two things. We can, uh, my wife said it the other day, it was so awesome. She said, you can, we, can feel, we can feel it when people talk about us. And we can feel when people are praying for us. When people talk about us, they say dimming, they say, they say draining, that the enemy is, trying, is using church people to come against us. <laughs> Did you know there's like, between statistics shows there's between 5,000 and 6,000 pastors that quits ministry. I think it's every month or every year, something like that. It's not, it's not because of... It's because the church allows the demons to use them instead of the Spirit of God to use them. Not you guys. You, I like you guys. are absolutely amazing. It's crazy. Who's going to do the work? Now we have always an issue about other people. The Bible says, do not talk about other, other people's servants. Who's other people's servants? The, the ministers out there. The Bible says, do not talk about other people's servants. They've, they are none of our business. Yet we've got a lot to say about anybody else that's in ministry that doesn't do things the way we do it. And the way we would like it. But yet, yet the people on the, on the, in the stadiums, they scream harder than anybody else. They always know how to play the game better than the people that's playing the game. Next one. When last did we rebuke every tactic of the devil, every influence of the devil in the government system, not the people, the devil. Because the devil influenced people. And Jesus, and don't think you are, we are, we are not you, you, obviously not you, but don't think we are so high and mighty and holy because we do here and there one thing right, but we contribute in the issue so much further in other areas of our lives. Because Jesus was and Peter said, 
Peter said, no, I'm not going to let you go to the cross. I'm not going to let you go there. And he says, get behind me, Satan. One of his disciples. Not, a, not a, uh, one that's not saved. One of his disciples. And it seems like a good thing. It seems like, oh, it's, it, uh, it's, I'm going to fight for Jesus. And he says, get behind me, Satan. And next, one, next moment he says, do you know who I am? He says, you are the Son of God. He says, the Father has revealed it to you. I don't know about you, but one moment, people can be used by the devil. And another moment, people can be used by the Spirit. It is, who do we give access to? Does that make sense? So, so, so when you talk so awesome, and you, you guys, because I know you speak a lot of life at home. Because I know you are doers of the word and you are listening to what we teach. And, and so when you go home and you... Anyway, wait, I'm going <laughs> Anyway, number eight. Um, when last did we take authority over the country and command our heavenly influence and power to reign and rule? When last? When last? So what I do want to ask you is to uproot every seed you've been sowing into this country. That you are having an issue with. Do I have the same issues? I also live here. The thing is, is I uh, just uh, want to do it and abide by the word. Because it says, do not think, um, do not uh, be like, uh, keep your mind on things above and not on things below. And it tells you, listen, this is what you've got to think about. And I just want to read this to you. That was, I just want to read this to you. It is in... Oh, I don't find it. Okay. Anyway, it's Philippians 4 verse 8. It says, think on these things. Think on, think on things that is pure, that is peaceable. Things of good report. I'm not going to ask you to uh, raise your hand. But I, um, the, we, why do you come to church? To get the good news. When you put on the news, you're going to get the bad news. Does the bad news always be the true news? No, it's not always the true news because people make money out of bad news because they catch your attention. And what they do is they catch your attention. They get you, to, they get you stirred up and angry and angry. And I don't believe that that guy died because of a heart attack running after that thief because he, he, was, he wasn't exercising. I believe that some, maybe things were builded up so much in him which is not Christ, which is not love, which is not peaceable, which is not of good report. We always have a choice. You choose to listen to what the Word says, and you choose to focus on the Word, and you choose to let God look after you, and you do in agreement and speak life. And you command all the works of the devil, whatever the Lord, after any, uh, the Spirit of the Lord puts on your heart, you command those things to go. And on the other side is, is I think that guy died because there was already a build up of all the issues. And so you being angry or frustrated or being this or being that in your own house, in your own business because of what you see on the news, it's not helping anybody. It's really quiet in here. Hallelujah. Let me get back to the good news. Amen. Are you all with me? God's not doing bad. God's not allowing bad. People are doing the things that you see. And we can either work with heaven or we can work against heaven. You either gather or you scatter. There is not a middle way. There's no middle way. There's no gray area. The gray area is the area of the devil that makes you believe that it's okay uh, if I don't say anything and I'm not saying you shouldn't say anything when you have an influence please use the influence and we got to speak up we got to say we got to stand for the things of God and for righteousness uh, in, in, in the places but there's no point you every day you freak out and there's a build up and a build up and a build up and a build up and there's no peace. You can't even hear what God's telling you. You can't even hear the good news. 
Maybe we must give a moment to repent first before I continue. But anyway, we'll do that now. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. I'm going to try to finish off with this. God, lo- uh, 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 this um, God really loves you. God really loves you. God loves the people. God loves the people of this country. God loves us. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says, Come to, uh, uh, um, and those who come to God, they must, uh, um, anyone who comes to God must believe that He is. Say with me that He is. And that He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek Him. In other words, as if I choose God and I choose to believe God and I choose to come to God, then I believe, I have to believe that He is, that He's real. Because a lot of times we, we are fighting just fears and fears and fears of our lives and thinking what is our family going to be like in the next generation, in the next generation. So what we do is we already built up, already let fear tell us what's going to happen in the next decade. We don't know what's going to happen. Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Any takers? Any takers? No, 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 no. But one thing what we can do is we can have a say into the future. Well, how do we do that? We start to agree with God's word regarding this country, regarding this world, regarding the things. We start to make agreements with God and heaven. And we start to speak life and declare life and we start to bind the works of the devil. Because God and the devil, they are not in partnership. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and God sends his own son to give life and life in abundance. And this is really important, because religion will tell you, no, um, and, and people will tell you, uh, not, not anybody here, but people will tell you that um, God allows this bad thing, and, and uh, the devil can't get to you if God doesn't permit it. That is not true. That is not true. That is not, I'm not, sorry, I'm looking more angry, but I, I'm just getting passionate, okay? I'm not, I'm not angry at you. I love you. I'm your friend. Okay? That is not the truth. That is a lie. That is a lie. Why? Because if the enemy can get you to blame God for things, then where does you, how are you going to have life? How are you going to be comforted in tribulation and stuff happening? How are you going to get wisdom if you actually, your heart blames God regarding uh, certain things? And same thing with healing. God doesn't withhold healing. He's already given healing. God doesn't withhold people not being saved. He already gave salvation to the world. They, the, the, the world still needs to catch up and respond and uh, hear the good news of Jesus and want to come to the Father, the one who brings good news. Hallelujah. I think I must, I'm, I think I must stop there. Is it going to be okay if I stop there? Should I, keep, should I keep going? Can I keep going? Amen. Hallelujah. 1 John 4. I, I got an open invitation. Thank you. 1 John 4 verse 10. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loves us. Perfect love casts out fear. And I feel that I'm going to stop there because I'm going to pray for people or something. The Holy Spirit wants to do something. Perfect love casts out fear. If you are fearful, you need to get to the Father and let Him love on you. And allow His love to, to come and push all fears of life out of you. And I'm not saying we, all, we don't go through stuff. I also go through stuff. You might not know it. You think it may be in your mind. I'm sitting at home and having the... This, this, ooh, this just... Everything's just so... Well, that's how we should think. I mean, that's how I need to train my mind. To just think everything's beautiful. I mean, because He says, keep your mind on things that is pure, peaceable, lovely, and of good report. I mean... But we all go through stuff. And, and I'm not saying that. But, but one thing is, is, Paul said these things. He, uh, he says, that it's not in that what I go through. Paul was shipwrecked. Paul was in prison. Paul was going through all these things, almost killed, almost stoned, all these things. Anybody been there? Anybody? 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 anybody went through what Paul, and he, he's sitting in prison. He says, rejoice always. Again, I say rejoice in prison. So you have always two options. You're going to always try to, uh, or you're going to not always try. You're going to always have the option of elevating where you're at, what you go through, what's happening around you. You always have this option, but there's no life in it. You have another option. It's called the Word of God. And as I'm going to put my nose in the Word of God, and I'm going to allow the Word of God to change me and produce life in me and to speak into my heart, So that he can command my steps and so that I'm awake and available that when God says move, I move. 
Because He told me so. Because I'm walking with God. Does that make sense? You don't have to be fearful over this country. You don't have to be fearful. And I'm not saying there's stuff that's happening. There is stuff happening. There's crazy stuff. And I can also get on a bandwagon and I can also get on a horse and we can ride it together. But into what? Into what are we going? Where are we going? I once had a... I, I, no, no, I still have a friend. I, I'm sure I have many friends. I think so. But this friend came to my house. We were still in Bethlehem. And he came in my house and he, he, oh, he was angered. He was raged at this one pastor doing this things and this things and this things. And he was like completely out of himself. And he's sitting on the couch and going. And he's hammering this pastor and what's happening and all these things that's happening. And I just looked at him and I said, you know what? He doesn't even know that. But you are like falling apart. Don't you realize that if you had the opportunity, what you can do is you pray for him. Pray that, thing, that it will be awakened to him, whatever is in your heart. Or maybe God's going to awake you. Does that make sense? Pray, pray for him. Pray for that pastor. Pray for him. Do you help a pastor? Why do they quit? Not because of the worldly people. Because of the church people. Oh, I said that. I really said that. A kingdom that is divided cannot stand. We need to get over ourselves and pray in the same direction. Build in the same direction. And we're going to see some things happening to our lives and our children's lives and our country because not all things is about you and yourself and your own things. We have a bigger picture at all, so I've got to lay down myself and come to you and say, Jesus, let me lay down my religion and my tradition and all my thinking, thinking, and help me to think the way you think. Help me to speak the way you speak. Help me to talk the way you talk. Let Jesus change me. And so I said to this friend of mine, I said, you know what? If you were standing in front of him, you could tell him, but you're sitting in Bethlehem and he's in another, in another city and you're sitting and raging here. And tomorrow you go home you hear another thing on Facebook and you pop like a popcorn. But this is an overburned popcorn. Nobody likes it. And so the only one that's cooking is you. And overcooked and burned is you. And nothing has changed. That person never hurt your feelings. They have never heard what's in your heart and how the gospel should be taught and this shouldn't be in the church and that shouldn't be in the church. Oh, I'm stepping on some toes. Yes, I'm, I am. I'm jumping on them. Are you with me? And I said, just calm down. I said, just calm down before we lose you. I didn't say that to him because I didn't want to speak death of him. But you get what I'm saying. So we all can work together and we can speak life and we can declare life. And once there was a lady that when, we, when stuff happened in the country years ago, she sent a family, they sent a, they sent a message to us. Somebody flies here. Please, please remove it. Okay, let's leave the story. Okay, let's leave it. But so the point that I want to say is, is what happens in you in your heart. It says, therefore guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. And there's a lot of issues that's flowing out of our lives that we don't want in our lives. But it flows out of our deposits. What we allow in there. What we, the seeds that we allow. And it, it's not to say I deny reality. But I can change reality with the word of God. But these who, those who come to God must believe that He is and He is a reward. It means that when I come to God and I, I take the Scriptures and I say, God, I'm going to use the Scriptures and I'm going to throw them in the air, in the atmosphere where the demons and the devil are working. I'm going to throw the Scriptures in the air. And this is my weapons. Our weapons is, is not carnal. It's not carnal. Some of yours, your, 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 your um, saves are ready with guns and loaded. Your battle is not carnal. Your battle is spiritual. 
You can kill one or two with your... I mean, please don't. Oh, shucks. I don't know if you say this right. You can kill one or two with a gun. But you can save a nation with prayer. Get what is here. That thing that's driving you, that's not Christ. Get it out. And work together with the kingdom. I mean, let's, let's pray and just smile. Smile while we pray. Amen. Jesus, thank you for your love and grace and mercy. And Lord, I thank you that, that you want to actually save people's health. You want to save, Lord. You want to, you're in the business of saving, Lord. And you have given us this amazing wisdom that comes from heaven to save us. So that we, our health can be endured. That our families and our children, Lord. And Lord, I'm, I'm, I just thank you, Lord, that you're not the one who's taking from people. You're not the one who allows bad to happen. You're not the one who controls all the bad that's happening in the world or allows the bad in the world. Father, I pray that there will be awakening over the church so that we can understand that you've given us weapons of warfare. It's called your word. It is actually to mix your word with faith and believe that when we speak, we shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living the goodness of God in the land of the living. And as your word says, if we are willing, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 90 says, if we are willing and obedient, willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. Father, we declare that this country is yours, Jesus. It's not, doesn't belong to man. And we break the power of man over this country and the, the power of, of um of the demonic that wants to hold and say, this is ours. This is not yours in Jesus' name. I rebuke that spirit of arrogance and pride and that, uh, that spirit of um, rebellion. I curse you in Jesus' name. I bind you in people's minds and actions and their mentalities, Father. I thank you, Father, that there will be a awakening over the church in Jesus' name, that they will start to speak in agreement because your word says God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or imagine according to the power that's working within us. What is that power? The power of agreement, agreeing with his word, coming to God and believe that he is and is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him, that we will believe that when we speak your word, things will shift. That we will believe that your word is like seed, that we sow it, we sow it, we sow it, and we never stop sowing it into our future, Lord. I thank you, Father, for your grace over us. And Father, thank you that we don't have to go and try to wrestle something, Father, that we can rest in Christ. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you will give us word and promises whereby we can speak forth, whereby you can speak forth through us, Lord, and, and declare it over our country and declare it over the people. And Father, we just come in Jesus' name and we humble ourselves by repenting, by repenting over every seed we've sown into this country, every seed we've sown into situations of, a, of death, every seed of death that we've sown. We come and I come in Jesus' name and I cancel the seed of death over this country in Jesus' name. I cancel those seeds and I uproot those seeds in the name of Jesus, not with my authority, but with the authority of Christ. Not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we, we take authority in the spirit over this country. And we bind the spirit of corruption. We bind the spirit of murder. Or the, the spirit of, of all the things that's happening. And Father, thank you that you are awakening your people to start to pray. To start to pray. And start to believe that their prayers, because your word says the prayer of the righteous avails much. It has great power. Start to pray. Start to believe that you make a difference when you open your mouth and agree with the word of God. And start to put our trust. Lord, I thank you that you help us to put our trust in your word. And in you, Lord. Not in this country. Not in the conditions, the situations. Because I know, Lord, I thank you that, you're, that we are not of this world. We are in this world. And I thank you that you don't leave us powerless but you've given us the holy spirit and i thank you but by the power of the holy spirit the lord the bible says not by might not by power but by my spirit says the lord by my spirit and lord i just pray for people that they will be led by the spirit not by might or by power but by the spirit of the lord thank you jesus 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 Thank you, Jesus. And I just pray, Father, that you will fill people right now with your spirit.
If you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. In Acts chapter 2 and, uh, and 1, it says that the disciples, I just want you to keep your eyes closed, the disciples were standing in the upper room. And Jesus, before He went, He says, I'm gonna, I have to go so I can send you the Helper. The Helper. The Holy Spirit. And in Acts, the fire of the Holy Spirit came. And Holy Spirit, we thank You for Your fire right now into people right now. Those who say, Lord, I lay down my life. Like we sang that last song, I lay down my life. Lord, I pray that you will live your life through me. Lord, I just pray that I won't be a part of the problem, that I will be part of the solution. That I will put this mouth that you've given me, I, I submit it. I submit it by the grace of God unto the Spirit of the Lord. I submit this mouth and this thoughts and the thinking. I take every thought captive that is not of you and I bring it under, under obedience unto Christ. He is Lord. I am not. And I thank you, Lord, that wherever we are making idols of, our, of things and, and, and issues, that, Lord, we repent of those idols. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord. We need you so much. Thank you so much for your grace. Your abounding, abounding, abounding grace. And there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So if you've been in the place where you've never um, given your life to Jesus, I want you to just say, Lord, I surrender my life. I believe. I believe. I believe in you, Jesus. Take my life and thank you for dying for me. Thank you for washing me clean. I want you to say that to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then I want, you, I want to ask you, if you have never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The, the, the Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit of the Lord came upon them, there were tongues of fire. There were tongues of fire. They started speaking other tongues. They started prophesying. Holy Spirit, I thank you that we yield our religion and our traditions down. And we want this. We want to declare, Lord, let it be unto us as your word says. Not let it be unto me as my comfort zone allows. But let it be unto us as your word says. Let us be filled. Holy Spirit, we ask you to be filled. Be filled with fire power and let your gift tongues and prophecy come forth and be manifested and that the power of God will flow because the Bible says in one day 3,000 came to repentance one day one day one day one day one day in one day thank you Jesus you are Lord and we exalt you and Lord no glory be to the flesh all the glory be unto you, Lord. And our eyes is upon you because your word says that our faith, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we just glorify you, Lord. We glorify you. We exalt you. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We exalt you. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy over us. Thank you for your patience with our mouths and our attitudes. Thank you that you are such a patient, Father, and that you have no anger in you. No, your anger has been all upon Jesus. And thank you that you are looking to us through the eyes of love and kindness and gentleness and patience, Lord. But we just want to also say thank you for your patience with us, Lord. And we surrender our mouths. I want you to see how you surrender your heart and your issues and your mouth and what is happening in your upstairs, your, in your brain and your thinking. Surrender those things to Christ and say, Lord, I'm coming to you and I want to learn from you. I want to learn from you. And the Bible says that in Zechariah, that there was a mountain before Zerubbabel. And there was shouts of grace. Grace. And the mountain fell flat before him. And any mountain that is before you, you can just shout grace, grace. 
or you can just command the mountain to move. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't leave us powerless, but you've given us the Holy Spirit to have authority over all the works of the devil. As Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says that we have been given authority over all the works of the devil. To trample on the serpent and the scorpion, the works of the devil. And nothing by any means shall hurt us. Thank you Jesus. Thank you that you put a shield of protection around your people and their families and their friends. And everybody that, care, that they care for. Lord, I thank you that you sign millions of angels to protect us and keep us. Father, thank you that you make us invisible to the works of the enemy and to the people that's planning bad things against us, Lord. I thank you that your word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Even a thousand fall next to us, to our left, the ten thousand at our right, it shall not come near us. In the name of Jesus, Father, thank you that we can, uh, we can come to you when we have this fear coming to us, this invitation of fear that we will come and just be filled with your love because your love cast out fear. Your perfect love cast out fear. Thank you, Jesus. I speak life over every person that is in this place in the name of Jesus. I speak life over you. I speak life over you. I speak freedom over you. Freedom. I speak a lifting of all the heaviness. Heaviness, go in Jesus' name. Go. Get out in Jesus' name. You will not return. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. All heaviness, everything go. All anxiousness, get out in Jesus' name. All fear, let them go in Jesus' name. Troubled minds, let them go in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. You will not return. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All forms of rejection, get out in Jesus' name. All forms of infirmity, sicknesses and diseases, get out in Jesus' name. You are denied. Access denied. You have no more permission in our bodies. You know, have no more permission in our lives. I thank you, Jesus, for your grace. We yield to your grace. We yield to your goodness, Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but prayer shifts things. When you feel overwhelmed, take your family, pray together immediately. But I want to encourage you or invite you. Let's, as a church... In this coming week, and hopefully we continue this always, put your alarm on your phone for the morning, for the afternoon, or for the morning, and lunch, and in the evening. And every time your alarm goes off, pray. Pray. Say, the Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Let me speak a life. Help me. What do I put words in my mouth? What do I declare? Or oh, your family is with you. Pray together. Pray together. And like Moses. God said to him, don't cry out to me. Use your staff. What is your staff? The word of God. When you use the word of God, God's power flows. You don't have to part the Red Sea or figure out how is the Red Sea going to get parted. You use the staff. What is the staff? The word of God. Speak forth. Let your word. Um, uh, uh, hallelujah. We're going to go for another session. Um, amen. Let the word not depart from your heart or your mouth. Let it not depart from your heart or your mouth. Let it not depart. Means it's got to get in to not depart. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop there. Praise Jesus. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Father, we thank you for all the tithes and offerings and all the people that, uh, that wants to give. Lord, we bless them. We bless them, Father, because there's no obligation to give. Father, I thank you for all the tithers and all the givers and those who, who want to do more than, in, uh, more than just tithe and more than just offer. They want to they give everything. They want to give their lives. They want to give their everything that they are. They want to give their minds, their emotions. They want to give all those things, Lord. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're going to just, amen. We, hey, hallelujah. Bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you.